an avatar Sanskrit, avatara iast, avatara, a concept in Hinduism that means descent, refers to the material appearance or incarnation of a deity on earth. The relative verb to alight to make one's appearance is sometimes used to refer to any guru or revered human being. The word avatar does not appear in the Vedic literature, but appears in verb forms in post Vedic literature, and is a noun particularly in the Puranic literature after the 6th century CE. Despite that, the concept of an avatar is compatible with the content of the Vedic literature like the Upanishads as it is symbolic imagery of the Saguna Brahman concept in the philosophy of Hinduism. The Rigveda describes Indra as endowed with a mysterious power of assuming any form at will. The Bhagavad Gita expounds the doctrine of avatara but with terms other than avatar. Theologically, the term is most often associated with the Hindu god Vishnu, though the idea has been applied to other deities. Varying lists of avatars of Vishnu appear in Hindu scriptures, including the ten Dashavatara of the Garuda Purana and the twenty-two avatars in the Bhagavata Purana, though the latter adds that the incarnations of Vishnu are innumerable. The avatars of Vishnu are important in Vaishnavism theology. In the goddess-based Shaktism tradition of Hinduism, avatars of the Devi in different appearances such as Tripura Sundari, Durga and Kali are commonly found. While avatars of other deities such as Ganesha and Shiva are also mentioned in medieval Hindu texts, this is minor and occasional. The incarnation doctrine is one of the important differences between Vaishnavism and Shaivism traditions of Hinduism. Incarnation concepts similar to avatar are also found in Buddhism, Christianity, and other religions. The scriptures of Sikhism include the names of numerous Hindu gods and goddesses, but it rejected the doctrine of savior incarnation and endorsed the view of Hindu bhakti movement saints such as Namdev that formless eternal god is within the human heart and man is his own savior. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> and meaning The Sanskrit noun avatara, Hindustani, ta r is derived from the Sanskrit roots ava down and tur to cross over. These roots trace back, states Monier Williams, to taratam, tarati, ritam, avatar literally means, descent, a light, to make one's appearance, and refers to the embodiment of the essence of a superhuman being or a deity in another form. The word also implies to overcome, to remove, to bring down, to cross something. In Hindu traditions, the crossing or coming down is symbolism, states Daniel Basak, of the divine descent from eternity into the temporal realm, from unconditioned to the conditioned, from infinitude to finitude. An avatar, states Justin Edwards Abbott, is a saguna with form, attributes embodiment of the Nirguna Brahman or Atman soul. Neither the Vedas nor the principal Upanishads ever mention the word avatar as a noun. The verb roots and form, such as avatarana, do appear in ancient post-Vedic Hindu texts, but as action of descending, but not as an incarnated person avatara. The related verb avatarana is, states Paul Hacker, used with double meaning, one is action of the divine descending, another is, laying down the burden of man. Suffering from the forces of evil, the term is most commonly found in the context of the Hindu god Vishnu. The earliest mention of Vishnu manifested in a human form to empower the good and fight against evil, uses other terms such as the word Sambhavami in verse 4.6 and the word Tanu in verse 9.11 of the Bhagavad Gita, as well as other words such as Akriti and Rupa elsewhere. It is in medieval era texts, those composed after the 6th century CE, that the noun version of avatar appears, where it means embodiment of a deity. 
The idea proliferates thereafter, in the Puranic stories for many deities, and with ideas such as Ancha Avatar or partial embodiments. The term avatar, in colloquial use, is also an epithet or a word of reverence for any extraordinary human being who is revered for his or her ideas. In some contexts, the term avatara just means a landing place, site of sacred pilgrimage, or just achieve one's goals after effort", or retranslation of a text in another language. The term avatar is not unique to Hinduism. It is found in the Trikaya doctrine of Mahayana Buddhism, in descriptions for the Dalai Lama in Tibetan Buddhism, and many ancient cultures. <laughs> avatar versus incarnation The manifest embodiment is sometimes referred to as an incarnation. The translation of avatar as incarnation has been questioned by Christian theologians, who state that an incarnation is in flesh and imperfect, while avatar is mythical and perfect. The theological concept of Christ as an incarnation, as found in Christology, presents the Christian concept of incarnation. According to Aduyoye and Vroom, this is different from the Hindu concept of avatar because avatars in Hinduism are unreal and is similar to Docetism. Sheth disagrees and states that this claim is an incorrect understanding of the Hindu concept of avatar. Avatars are true embodiments of spiritual perfection, one driven by noble goals, in Hindu traditions such as Vaishnavism. Topic. Avatars of Vishnu The concept of avatar within Hinduism is most often associated with Vishnu, the preserver or sustainer aspect of God within the Hindu trinity or trimurti of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. Vishnu's avatars descend to empower the good and fight evil, thereby restoring Dharma. Traditional Hindus see themselves not as Hindu. But as Vaishnava worshippers of Vishnu, Shaiva worshippers of Shiva, or Shakta worshipper of the Shakti. Each of the deities has its own iconography and mythology, but common to all is the fact that the divine reality has an explicit form, a form that the worshipper can behold. An oft quoted passage from the Bhagavad Gita describes the typical role of an avatar of Vishnu. The Vishnu avatars appear in Hindu mythology whenever the cosmos is in crisis, typically because the evil has grown stronger and has thrown the cosmos out of its balance. The avatar then appears in a material form, to destroy evil and its sources, and restore the cosmic balance between the ever-present forces of good and evil. The most known and celebrated avatars of Vishnu, within the Vaishnavism traditions of Hinduism, are Krishna, Rama, Narayana and Vasudeva. These names have extensive literature associated with them, each has its own characteristics, legends and associated arts. The Mahabharata, for example, includes Krishna, while the Ramayana includes Rama. <laughs> Dashavatara The Bhagavata Purana describes Vishnu's avatars as innumerable, though ten of his incarnations Dashavatara, are celebrated therein as his major appearances. The ten major Vishnu avatars are mentioned in the Agni Purana, the Garuda Purana and the Bhagavata Purana. The ten best known avatars of Vishnu are collectively known as the Dasavatara a Sanskrit compound meaning, ten avatars. Five different lists are included in the Bhagavata Purana, where the difference is in the sequence of the names. Frida Matchett states that this re-sequencing by the composers may be intentional, so as to avoid implying priority or placing something definitive and limited to the abstract. <laughs> <laughs> Longer alternatives 
The Bhagavata Purana also goes on to give an alternate list, wherein it numerically lists out 22 Vishnu avatars in Chapter 1.3. Four Kumaras Katorsana BP 1.3.6 The four sons of God Brahma and exemplified the path of devotion Varaha BP 1.3.7 The divine warthog who lifts earth from cosmic waters Narada BP 1.3.8 The divine sage who travels the worlds as a devotee of Vishnu Nara Narayana BP 1.3.9 The Twin Sages Kapila BP 1.3.10 A renowned sage spoken of in the Mahabharata son of Kardama Muni and Devahuti and sometimes identified with the founder of the Samkhya school of philosophy Datatriya BP 1.3.11 The combined avatar of the Hindu trinity Brahma Vishnu and Shiva he was born to the sage Atri became a great seer himself Yajna BP 1.3.12 The Lord of Fire Sacrifice, who was also a previous Indra, the Lord of Heaven Rishabha BP 1.3.13 The father of Bharata Chakravartin and Bahabali Prithu BP 1.3.14 The sovereign king who milked the earth as a cow to get the world's grain and vegetation and also invented agriculture Matsya BP 1.3.15 A narwhal who guided Manu's ark during the pralaya deluge and also killed demon Hayagriva Kirma BP 1.3.16 A giant tortoise who balances Mount Mandara atop his caprice during the churning of the cosmic ocean of milk Donventari BP 1.3.17 The father of Ayurvedic medicine and a physician to the Devas Mahini BP 1.3.17 The enchantress Narasimha BP 1.3.18 The man lion who kills demon Hiranyakashpu Vamana BP 1.3.19 The dwarf Parashurama BP 1.3.20 The Brahmin warrior with an axe who kills Kartyavira Arjuna and his Kshatriya allies Rama BP 1.3.22 Perfect King from Suryavansha subject of Ramayana Vyasa BP 1.3.21 The compiler of the scriptures Vedas and writer of the scriptures Puranas and the epic Mahabharata Balarama BP 1.3.23 Lord of agriculture and elder brother to Krishna Krishna BP 1.3.23 subject of the Mahabharata and the Bhagavad Gita Buddha BP 1.3.24 the enlightened teacher Kalki BP 1.3.26 the future lawgiver avatars like Hayagriva Hamsa and Garuda are also mentioned in the Pankaratra making the total of 39 avatars However, despite these lists, the commonly accepted number of ten avatars for Vishnu was fixed well before the 10th century CE. Types The avatar concept was further developed and refined in later Hindu texts. One approach was to identify full avatar and partial avatars, Krishna, Rama and Narasimha were full avatars, Purna avatars while others were partial avatars, Ansha avatars Some declared, states Noel Sheth, that every living creature is an avatar of Vishnu. The Pancharatra text of Vaishnavism declares that Vishnu's avatar include those that are direct and complete sakshad, indirect and endowed avisha, cosmic and salvific vayuha, inner and inspirational antaryaman, consecrated and in the form of image archa. Yet another classification, developed in Krishna schools, centers around guna avatars, purusha avatars and lila avatars, with their subtypes. 
The Guna avatar classification of avatars is based on the Guna's concept of the Samkhya school of Hindu philosophy, that is Rajas Brahma, Sattva Vishnu, and Tamas Shiva. These personalities of the Trimurti are referred to as Guna avatars. The Purushavatara are three. The first evolves the matter prakriti, the second is the soul present in each individual creature, the third is the interconnected oneness or Brahman that connects all souls. The Lilavataras are partial or full manifestations of Vishnu, where either some powers Shakti or material parts of him exist, Vishnu is Purushavatara. The Matsya, Kirma and Vimana avatars of Vishnu are Lilavataras. A Purnarupa in this classification, is when Vishnu manifests completely along with his qualities and powers. In Bengal Vaishnavism, Krishna is the Purnarupa. In Shaivism, Bhairava is the Purnarupa of Shiva. In Sikhism Twenty-four avatars of Vishnu are mentioned in Bachatar Natak's composition in Dasam Granth, the second scripture of Sikhs written by Guru Gobind Singh. The Guru Granth Sahib everentially includes the names of numerous Hindu deities, including Vishnu avatars such as Krishna, Hari, and Rama, as well those of Devi as Durga. Dasam Granth has three major compositions, one each dedicated to avatars of Vishnu avatar and Brahma. However, Sikhism rejects the doctrine of savior incarnation, and only accepts the abstract Nirguna formless god. The Sikh gurus endorsed the view of Hindu bhakti movement saints such as Namdev that formless eternal God is within human heart and man is his own savior. <laughs> <laughs> Avatars of Ganesha The Linga Purana declares that Ganesha incarnates to destroy demons and to help the gods and pious people. The two Upapuranas, Ganesha Purana and Mudgala Purana, detail the avatars of Ganesha. Both these Upapuranas are core scriptures of the Gunapatya sect, exclusively dedicated to Ganesha worship. Four avatars of Ganesha are listed in the Ganesha Purana, Mohatkata, Myersvara, Gajanana and Dumraketu. Each avatar corresponds to a different yuga, has a different mount and different skin complexion, but all the avatars have a common purpose, to slay demons. The Mudgala Purana describes eight avatars of Ganesha. Vakratunda, Vakratunda twisting trunk. His mount is a lion. Ekadanta, single tusk. His mount is a mouse. Mahodara, big belly. His mount is a mouse. Gajavaktra or Gajanana, elephant face. His mount is a mouse. Lambadera, pendulous belly. His mount is a mouse. Vakata, Vakata, unusual form. Misshapen. His mount is a peacock. Vinaraja, Vinaraja, King of Obstacles. His mount is the celestial serpent Sesa. Dumravarna, Dumravarna, Gray Color, corresponds to Shiva. His mount is a horse. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Avatars of Shiva. Although Puranic scriptures contain occasional references to avatars of Shiva, the avatar doctrine is neither universally accepted nor commonly adopted in Shaivism. The views on the doctrine of incarnation has been one of the significant doctrinal differences between Vaishnavism and Shaivism, in addition to their differences on the role of householder life versus monastic life for spiritual release. Shaivism is a transcendental theology, where man, with the help of his guru, is his own savior. The Linga Purana lists 28 avatars of Shiva. In the Shiva Purana, there is a distinctly Saivite version of a traditional avatar myth. Shiva brings forth Virabhadra, one of his terrifying forms, in order to calm Narasimha, an avatar of Vishnu. 
when that fails, Shiva manifests as the human lion bird Sharaba, which calms down lion bird Narasimha avatar of Vishnu, and Shiva then gives Vishnu a chakra as gift. A similar story is told in the late medieval era Sharaba Upanishad. However, Vaishnava Dvaita school refutes this Shaivite view of Narasimha, the monkey god Hanuman who helped Rama, the Vishnu avatar is considered by some to be the eleventh avatar of Rudra Shiva. Some regional deities like Khandoba are also believed by some to be avatars of Shiva, Shesha and his avatars Balarama and Lakshmana are occasionally linked to Shiva. Adi Shankara, the formulator of Advaita Vedanta, is also occasionally regarded as an avatar of Shiva. In Dasam Granth, Guru Gobind Singh mentioned two avatars of Rudra, Dadatriya avatar and Parasnath avatar. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Avatars of Devi. Avatars are also observed in Shaktism, the sect dedicated to the worship of the goddess Devi, but they do not have universal acceptance in the sect. The Devi Bhagavata Purana describes the descent of Devi avatars to punish the wicked and defend the righteous, much as the Bhagavata Purana does with the avatars of Vishnu. Like Vishnu, his consort Lakshmi incarnates as Sita and Radha, the consorts of Rama and Krishna avatars. Nilakantha, an 18th century commentator on the Devi Bhagavata Purana, which includes the Devi Gita, says that various avatars of the goddess include Shakambari and even the masculine Krishna and Rama, generally thought to be Vishnu's avatars. Lakshmi and Saraswati are main goddesses worshipped as Devi avatars. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Avatars of Lakshmi. Sridevi and Budevi are two different forms of goddess Lakshmi. Dharini, the consort of Parashurama, Sita, the consort of Rama and Yashodhara, the consort of Siddhartha along with the consorts of the previous incarnations of Vishnu are all considered full incarnations of Lakshmi. On the other hand, Radha and the Gopis, Rukmini, Satyabhama and the rest of Krishna's wives with the exception of Yamuna are all considered partial incarnations of Lakshmi. Topic. Avatars of Brahma In Dasam Granth, second scriptures of Sikhs written by Guru Gobind Singh, mentioned seven Brahma avatars. Valmiki avatar Kashyapa avatar Datatriya avatar Lakshman avatar Vyasa avatar Balarama avatar Kalidasa avatar According to the Skanda Purana, Brahma incarnated himself as Yajnavalka in response to a curse from Shiva. See also Avatars in the Mahabharata Dashavatara Gautama Buddha in Hinduism Incarnation List of avatar claimants equals equals notes. <laughs>